Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to talk about the Haltech CAN keypads and why you might want one if it's in the budget. Uh, some of the things that you can do uh, that are really cool compared to a standard on-off toggle switch panel from uh, the old days, you know, like a couple years ago. Um, this works with Elite software, or I should say the Elites with the NSP software, excuse me, and the Nexus. Uh, so you do need to have that. It will not work with the older Platinum plug-and-play stuff or Sport. But if you have the, the newer stuff, which obviously is what I mostly cover um, as far as the Haltech uh, software and hardware, we're going to dig into it. I'm going to show you some of the cool things you can do and why you probably want to add this to your list of needed car parts. Let's get to the software. So starting off in the NSP software, I have a generic map set up to illustrate what we're doing. Now I've already gone through and added the keypad, but I will back up and show you how easy that is by disabling the device. What you would do is go to Haltech CAN, and you can see any Haltech CAN system devices we had an episode on the CAN dash. If this car didn't have one, you would click that off. And then you can see that it moves, it disappears down here because that will show you what your CAN systems are. We have a two channel wideband for a V motor. We don't have any input output expander boxes, but we have one keypad that I've already taken the time to set up and populate. So we'll just add a second one, easy enough. So we can see that we have two eight button keypads or realistically, if I needed that many, I should probably just buy the three by five and have 15. So now as far as using them, the way that you can use them as a generic switch and use it for scramble boost or a, a boost offset. You can see that I've done that here already. The button gives you a, a few different setup options. You have momentary or push on, push off. If you select push on, push off, then you have three things to choose from. It will, every time the car starts, it's always off. It's on or the last state that it was on. So because this is a, a boost adder, probably would be safest to have it uh, always be off. And then if I want to, obviously I would find it on that keypad where I have it labeled press the button and boom, my boost adder is on, which we'll look at later. But first, let's, let's set up how we would use this typically, uh, in this case for boost control, or I have it also for the pedal translation for the TPS drive-by-wire. We would start by going to sensors. And then you can see that I have some rotary trim modules added. This is if we're going to do an up down button. Obviously I showed you how the switch works. The switch is easy and then it's a custom table adding that axis, but we can go through that too. So we'll add a rotary trim module and we get to name them. So we're going to call it 91 octane trim. It gives us an option for a single or dual input. If its max position is three, you actually have four because you have zero, one, two, three. But we're going to do dual input because that's cooler because that's going to be up and down. We're going to set this to six because that's a max. So again, we technically get seven. And now it's thrown a, a warning. It wants to know what our wiring is. So here you can see we already assigned the down input is button two. So let's make the up input button one. Kind of got them out of order there a little bit. But since we're doing up and down, they need to be momentary. So we'll set both of those. And so that sets up just like we do any rotary trim dial. Um, in this case, we're just going to use them as up-down buttons. 
Now let's go make an ignition correction map. And in this case, you know, maybe this is what we're going to do for 91 octane. So we're going to do generic correction number one, 91 octane, which obviously I named here from the, the conditions, which we could do conditions enable. Maybe I'm not worried about it under a certain RPM or a certain boost. I could set that all up here. Or I can build my map. So originally I had this as a generic switch. So this would be a push on, push off, and remember the state. But we're going to reconfigure this where it's up and down. So it's pretty easy. We're just going to go, instead of state, we're going to find rotary trim 3. And we're going to use the wizard here, just like we've done in all of our our other custom map making videos. So 0 to 6, increment of 1, hit OK, OK. And depending on boost and where we have that, we can adjust the trim. Now realistically, maybe... Maybe we don't want it versus boost. Maybe we want it versus something else. But basically, if it was all the way off with none of the LEDs lit, then it's not doing anything. So that would be our 91 octane map, possibly. Now we can come in and make a progressive trim table so that every time we press up, it'll go from zero to one to two, so on and so forth. We can pull a degree of timing versus these boost levels. Maybe we want to get fancy and we, we want to pull a bunch of timing versus high boost versus low boost. Maybe we know that our car is only going to be on pump gas when we're running on this fuel. So we need to be aggressive because we don't want to go through and change the boost control. But you can set it up however you need. Obviously, I got a little aggressive there. I don't run 29 and a half pounds on pump gas, but gives us gives us some things to think about, some things to see, right? We we can we can kind of play with that a little bit. Now let's look at some of the other ways we might use it, which for the most part is probably going to be the most common is boost control. Now, the main reason I would use the CAN keypad instead of a rotary trim knob is if I had need for other push-on, push-off items, such as I need fan control, uh, fuel pump control, maybe when the engine isn't running, but I want to turn those on to help cool it down or pump fuel out because I'm switching to ethanol. So if you have the CAN keypad anyway, it makes for a cleaner install. It's definitely less wiring. And in this case, you can see that we've set the map up more or less the same, 0 to 6 for the button position, which it lights the LEDs, so all off is 0, all on is number 6, but technically we get 7 different maps. Switching to how it's set up, you can see what I did. Pretty common, uh, top axis is RPM, left axis is boost control, and then I did it versus flex. So realistically, in this particular case, there's 42 different boost settings um, because I can do it for each ethanol content. And while that's probably not necessary or practical, I just did it for the sake of this video. Um, now, under boost control, we do have an option for scramble boost, which I showed in the dash video. So we can assign a button to the scramble boost. And in this case, I did, so I'll show you. So I set the offset, it'll add four pounds. If, if I decide to do that, by turning it on under the wiring section, which we'll get to, it asks for the input, so we'll go look at the button. Um, you can actually also add wastegate duty cycle 
It has a hold time, so it's a momentary button, but if you press it, it's active for whatever time you put in here. In this case, 10 seconds. Now, if you held it down, it has a maximum timing that it could ever use, which is 15. So maybe I would set this so that I got five seconds of extra boost, but if I'm holding it down because it's within easy reach, after 15 seconds, it's gonna turn off. Um, if I want it to, because the rest time is not currently populated, I could make it to where there's a 15 second delay before it can come back online. Probably a safe way to do that. So because it's enabled, it's gonna ask for an input. So let's just go to the wiring. And you can see here, scramble boost input. It named it itself and it was assigned to the top left number one key on the A button pad. So it would be the closest to me, or I could use this one, which this one I used for the nitrous enable, which we can look at. Push on, push off. And here's an, a good example of when you have something that's not momentary and you want it to remember, I, I would always want my nitrous to be off, regardless of if I'm at the track or not. Yes, it can, it can be kind of a problem, um, but if you had this set to last state and you're on the street and you have your bottle open, well, you're, you're going to be going through nitrous every time you hit the criteria to activate it. So a safe bet is to just leave that where the button startup is always off and then you need to turn it on. It's really easy to look at because if there's no LEDs, it's off. So in the staging lanes, you can turn it on, go through your checklist before you get up to the lights. Obviously on the street, you probably have the nitrous off anyway, so your bottle's closed. So it may not matter, but as a safety function, definitely feel leaving that off would be your best bet. Um, also, if you have a, a boost high-low uh, correction, that would be that would be one where this is going to add if the button is on versus ethanol content and gear and it's conditional but it's on a generic switch so that boost high low if we come back down here greater than or equal to one being on. So that generic switch is right here, switch two. So let's go back up to that real quick. When you were looking for the generic switch, you can type in generic switch, or if you remember what you named it, it's kind of cool. You can actually do boost high low and it takes you to the same place. So the wiring is done on the generic switch side, but your target pressure generic correction, which would be under your normal, in this case, boost correction table, you just click and you'd set it up in the conditions. So very powerful tool, definitely worth the money. Um, if you have the budget and you have a place to put it, uh, but you can use it for fuel pumps, you can use it for the radiator fans, intercooler pump, um, more or less anything that you can think of when you start enabling generic switches. So a couple hundred bucks that's, in my mind, well spent. Anyway, guys, hope you're all doing well. Take care. We'll talk to you again later. If that content is something that you like, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Definitely leave comments for positive, negative. Let, let me know where I can improve, what you guys want to see in the future. It just helps the channel and it helps get you the content that you want. If possibly you have a friend or a community group that can benefit from content like this, Please consider sharing it with them, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to go. Lastly, if you want notified as new content is added, simply click on the bell icon and YouTube will do that for you. Thanks again, guys. Take care.